Today marks one year since the start of the pandemic for the tri-state area. New York City, one of the first places in the country hit hard by coronavirus. And while it's been a year of pain and struggle for so many, there are some new signs of hope with three vaccines now in distribution. On this day last year, the first known COVID case was confirmed in Manhattan. Fast forward 365 days and the city has seen more than 728,000 cases. CBS 2's Andrea Klein-Thomas live tonight in Long Island City, Queens with more for us, Andrea. Well, Maurice, you talked about the vaccines. That is really the good news in all of this. Science definitely met this moment, and it signals that an end is in sight. But it's still so hard to process what we've all gone through this last year. And while there is hope, there's still a lot of grieving to do. Our goal, 5 million New Yorkers fully vaccinated by June. That goal is in reach, unquestionably, and with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine about to arrive literally a matter of days. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine brings new hope on the anniversary of the long and weary battle against the coronavirus. We didn't go to any places, cooked food at home and everything. I mean, it was a very scary time. Me not being able to manage being a mom of two and also working five days in person um, and taking care of my own kids who were remote. So um, <laughs> it's been a year. By the time a 39 year old healthcare worker tested positive for COVID on March 1st, 2020, after returning from a trip overseas, the virus was already spreading unknowingly in the tri state area. If we had had testing, we would have known that, that the disease was already here in February. We literally, no one understood it because we had no evidence. Within days of the first known case, streets were deserted as schools and businesses closed, except for what was deemed essential. Face coverings became the mandatory accessory, keeping our distance an urgent safety measure. Since this thing happened, our, our job is totally down. The economic fallout was immediate as food pantry lines wrapped around city blocks. <laughs> Meanwhile, on the front lines, hospitals were overwhelmed. PPE was in short supply and the death toll unimaginable. I was in shock like a lot of people died. It's difficult. I've lost family, a family member who was um, an EMT. Bruised but not broken. Residents fought back for their health, each other, and their neighborhood businesses, like the Thirsty Koala restaurant in Astoria, Queens. Without the community, without our regulars, without uh, their support, you know, and their, their steadfastness, don't worry, we're going to get through this, we're here for you. When politicians couldn't get the job done, it was humanity that had to stand in the gap. While the battle continues one year later, and we made it. We certainly did make it. Now, COVID has taught us so much. One of the things that it did teach us was about the deep inequities that exist in our society. Politicians and residents alike say that must be addressed in the recovery. Reporting live from Long Island City, Queens, Andrea Klein-Thomas, CBS 2 News. Andrea, thank you. And we are taking a look back at all that we have gone through and also what lies ahead in a CBS 2 special, A Year in the Pandemic, Remembrance and Re Resilience. That's tonight, 9 o'clock, streaming on CBSN New York and airing on WLNY TV 1055.